What's up guys, Justin Desick, London, Ontario Realtor here. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click that notification bell so I can keep bringing you great real estate content. Tonight, we've got something special for you, and that is an interview with an industry professional, something we haven't done before, so please, let us know what you think in the comments and let's go meet our guest. What's up guys, Justin Desick, London, Ontario Realtor here. Today we've brought in Kevin LaRouche. Kevin is a professional home inspector with Homes Inspections here in London. And today we're gonna to be talking about whether or not you as a buyer should consider getting a home inspection when buying property. Thanks for joining us today, Kevin. Thanks Justin for having me, it's a pleasure. Thanks for coming. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into being a home inspector? Sure, yeah. Um, started seven years ago, a qualified home inspector here in London, and um, I've done 4,000 or more inspections in the surrounding area. We're gonna do um, inspections on regular residential buildings. Um, we're gonna take a look at uh, doing uh, buildings commercially, mixed residential, rental properties, Anything really that you have that's out there you can do an inspection. Okay, so commercial, residential, um, investment properties. What about recreational properties like a cottage? Yeah, absolutely. Cottages, any any type of property that has a building and a structure, uh, we uh, we can inspect. I can inspect it. Very good. Okay. Yeah. And what uh, what kind of qualifications typically? What training goes into becoming a home inspector with homes inspections? Well, there's um, two um, associations here uh, that you can register with. And when you register with them as a candidate member, you have to go through an extensive process of uh, schooling and uh, training uh, with many hours, hundreds of hours of um, paid inspections uh, before you can decide to get and register for an RHI status. Okay, all right, great. And Kevin and I have known each other here since a golf tournament back about five or six years ago. And uh, Kevin is one of the uh, home inspectors that I recommend to my clients when looking at investment properties, cottages, residential, as well as commercial property. So Kevin, why don't we talk a little bit about what is covered in a typical scope of a, let's say, residential home inspection. What are some of the things that you would look for as a home inspector in representing the interests of a buyer in the purchase of a property? Well, Justin, we go in to do a visual inspection of a property. So if you're looking at a typical residential building, we'll start on the outside. Um, go through the exterior of the building in detail and explain all the different components uh, to the homeowner and uh, have a chance to get them to ask questions so they understand the information. And as we're going through that process, we're going to outline any type of concerns, uh, deficiencies as we call them. Um, they can really be anything that's safety uh, related, insurance, or just general repairs or even large repairs. When we're done the exterior of the building, which involves all the siding, roof material, uh, air conditioner, as well as the structure, and any type of water management system that may cause concerns in the building, uh, we head in downstairs into the basement and we start with the electrical plumbing and heating. Um, as we do that, we're still going through those components uh, and explaining to the home, the potential homeowner um, what they're looking at, what the component is, how it functions, and then give them an explanation of any type of repairs uh, okay. that are happening at the time of the inspection. Then we'll walk through the building and, and basically go through all the walls, ceilings and floors, light switches, doorknobs, uh, counters, cabinets, toilets, um, faucets, fixtures, and then always the favorite at the end is the attic space. All right, that's, that's your favorite? No, it's kind of with, yeah, it's uh, everyone's favorite for sure. Sure, yeah. sure. Okay, so then if you're making a large purchase such as a, a residential home, you as a buyer would want to know exactly what's going on with it. And ultimately, it's, it's probably not new. It's probably a resale home more often than not. And then ultimately, you want to make sure that everything's working and uh, Kevin's gonna provide those types of services. So what kind of options do buyers have as far as a, a report? Are you able to give them something in writing to identify some of the concerns that are identified in your inspection? 
Why good question, Justin. Yeah, yeah, good question, Justin. So after we're done the visual inspection, which on a typical property is two and a half, three hours, uh, going through and explaining everything to the buyer or the potential buyer and any of the concerns, we document it with some pictures. Um, so typically my type of inspections, I'll take two to 300 pictures of the building and include uh, those pictures uh, after the inspection is completed into a comprehensive report. And the report is provided to the client in a PDF format uh, they, that they get to keep that outlines everything that we discussed during the inspection. Now, uh, there is things that, uh, that we don't need to include, but we try to cover as much detail as possible mm -hmm. uh, with clients, even if it's outside of the scope of an inspection. Okay, so what are some of the things, I'm glad you brought that up, what are some of the things that may not be included in a typical residential home inspection? Could you pipe in on some of those things? Um, typical, so we look at those major components, but the inspection's visual. So if there's anything uh, inside of a wall, uh, would be first, uh, we not bringing out a saw mm -hmm. and uh, cutting any holes in any walls. So we get an idea of those systems and components for what's visually um, seen and then uh, let the client know that uh, if there is anything that may be in the wall uh, that would be of concern, then we'll notify the client to take a look at having further evaluation done maybe by a professional electrician, okay. a certified electrician. What about things like hot tubs and pools, are you able to counsel a buyer on those types of things within a typical inspection? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. So if there's something there that's visual, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it for them, but uh, pools and associated equipment and hot tubs are not part of a home inspection. Okay. There's right. professionals out there that can definitely take a look at those and they're not part of the building component. Okay. Um, so we were focusing basically on the building components and uh, letting the clients know what the condition of those building components are at the time of the inspection. But if I take a look at a hot tub, which I do with the clients anyway, um, it takes some time. So if they have any questions, I have some extensive background. Um, I'll try to help them and answer those questions. Okay. And if we feel that you know the hot tub's really not in working condition, we'll let them know to, to get that professional in that field. Sure. Same with the pools. Sure. Okay. The most important thing with a pool, by the way, is really the liner. So when we talk to clients, we, we can take a look at the electricity system, which is part of the building component. Mm -hmm. uh, but any of the equipment, they should have a certified pool operator or, or a professional pool company come out, explain to them about the liner and what condition it's in and the age, if they can determine that, and then test any of the equipment. Sure. Okay. So what I'm hearing then is that you have basically a, a standardized category of things that you'll look at visually and then anything that may not fall within that category. If there's any indication that there may be a, a cause for further investigation, you'd refer them to a third party contractor, somebody that does pools or hot tubs or, you know, maybe some type of electrical. If there was any additional investigation that may be yeah, that, that's correct. Yeah. So we're, we're going to give them as much detail as possible about the building. And, but if there's really anything that I feel in my professional opinion that needs further evaluation, we'll definitely uh, notify the clients of that uh, okay. to make sure that they have an opportunity to uh, investigate if it could be possibly something that is a serious repair or condition uh, that can't fully visually be seen then we'll definitely um, put them through to somebody as a professional. And I know you have lots of professionals uh, in different areas of uh, construction uh, that you can refer the clients to as well. So sure. yeah. uh, the partnership works great that way with the realtor. And uh, then we can notify them to get the further evaluation. So we put that uh, into the report system as well. So it's just an understanding that it's just a visual inspection, uh, very detailed though. Uh, to make sure that the client gets uh, a good snapshot and picture of the condition of the building. Sure, okay, all right. So then ultimately um, that whole experience is with the buyer in mind to make sure that the buyer understands exactly what they're buying, 
And if there was any cause for any further investigation, then that buyer is going to be referred to possibly another level of inspector uh, that is going to be introduced maybe by someone like myself. A qualified real estate professional is going to have a number of guys like Kevin at their disposal for other things, maybe as far as pools, septic. You don't deal with septics. No, good point as well. Yep. So uh, well water, uh, septic systems are, again, they're underground. If there's anything visual that's inside the house, we'll look and inspect it. But those main systems, the septic tanks, the lids, the leach field, and the well are not visual, so we're not able to inspect sure. them. So we do run the water to make sure that at least they have uh, water mm -hmm. while they're there. That and helps. Water's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, water's good. And um, and if they need a water quality test, we, we can help them with that as well. And, and uh, I know you can help them with that as well. So uh, it's just the, the understanding that we can't look at it visually. But if I really feel that there's something of concern, it'll be noted. And, uh, and I will give them uh, the heads up on that to do further evaluation. So with regard to water, so as far as a UV system or any water softener system, again, you're gonna visually look at those things, but if there's any need for any further testing of the water, you wouldn't take the sample in. That would be either for myself or the buyer to take the, the sample into the lab have the water tested. If you're not on town water or municipal water, you wanna make sure that you have safe and clean drinking water. Uh, let's let's talk more about some other types of properties. So what about, sure. a, what about a new home, Kevin? Like, would you still recommend that a buyer get an inspection, even if the home is brand new, never been lived in, 10 days since the last coat of paint was put on the wall? Uh, absolutely. Um, New homes come with new problems. So uh, we offer Terry on warranty inspections and uh, they're a detailed inspection based on the Terry on warranty guidelines. And the three different types of inspections that we offer are at the three different stages of new home builds, which is your pre-delivery inspection. So that's when the day you get the home and the keys mm -hmm. and the builder offers you a, a, a PDI and you can have a representative there, such as myself, a professional uh, inspector, and um, we'll document, again, everything that we see uh, that may be of concern or as we call the new home problems, because mm -hmm. uh, nothing's perfect. And then the other two uh, inspections that we offer are uh, down the road, so 30 days after you've lived in the home, Terion offers another uh, period of time for you to submit any type of problems or claims uh, of any of the systems that may be um, causing concern that are defective or something that isn't working right. Mm -hmm. And then a year down the road, the same thing. Now, Terion does have a longer warranty package um, with two year and seven year, but as it goes along, uh, less and less is covered. Uh, where you get right to the end and it's just a basic structure mm -hmm. at the seven year mark. So the important time to have me as a professional come out and help you is the PDI, the pre-delivery inspection period, right when you're taking the keys, the day of ownership, and then 30 days after that, and then one year. Okay, so then ultimately that's a great overview of looking at a new home. What about something like a condominium where there's some common elements and things, walls that belong to the condo and the interior of the property is actually the, the individual unit owner? Would you still recommend people to look at an inspector going through in a apartment style condo, townhouse style condo, uh, when the roof and the windows may not be the responsibility of the owner? That's, that's right, that's very true. Uh, we still inspect those buildings, uh, semi-detached or, or detached condos where uh, the condo corporation has a status certificate that outlines items that they may look after and there's different condo corporations out there that have different status certificates, different items that they look after on mainly the exterior as you mentioned. So. We adjust our inspection for that. It's still visual, so we're still gonna look at all those components even if the condo corp looks after them. And the reason for that would be to give the client again an understanding of that component, how it functions, and if it does cause a problem, and even after that, an issue on the inside of the building, they understand why that is. Um, condo corp can't be there every day. 
So it's good to have that good communication with the condo corporation to help them through it. So we're gonna go in there and do the semi-detached or detached type condos, give them still the full inspection, um, the full information, the detail uh, on that building. Um, again, visually, so if there's any walls that are attached uh, to another area, we're not able to inspect the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but we can get a good understanding and a feeling of uh, information if there is a structure concern inside the building from their side uh, and from the outside as well. And that's why we also inspect the outside to get a full 100% view of the building so that when we do see something that looks like a concern, we understand if it is a valid concern and we can uh, give the information to the client about that. Great. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about maybe uh, something that would have some natural elements around it, maybe um, a cottage if you had something that was maybe requiring further investigation from a drainage capacity. Let's say, for example, there's an embankment behind the property. Would an inspector identify, you know, a potential drainage issue in a surrounding area of a home that's saying, hey, there is a big embankment in behind you, you get a heavy rain, all that water is going to come down in behind you and possibly go right into your basement unless you have some way to divert it. Would you, would you identify those types of things maybe on a property that has you know a stream or a or like i say an embankment when we drive when we drive into um, a neighborhood or to a property um, it's important to note where that property is located first uh, before you decide to start inspecting it for that exact reason of water drainage which is the most important item on the exterior of a building is your drainage system and that includes where you're located, uh, your gutters, your downspouts, and the grading uh, mm -hmm. that's around. So as you mentioned, an, an embankment that may be sloped improperly. There is lots of homes, and we don't want to concern people because um, there is lots of homes that are built on the side of a bank uh, where it slopes toward the building. And that can still be uh, okay in the sense that if as long as the drainage system functions in that backyard, where it slopes toward the building, mm -hmm. uh, then there's no moisture uh, at the building level. So we go over that with clients. It can be adjusted. It's, it's not something uh, that can't be dealt with at that time. Um, some people have already dealt with it when we go into homes, but yes, those embankments, as an example, that slope towards the building can have special drainage systems to divert water, and it's very important. Sure, so your report would identify that, a recommendation, or at least pointing it out that there could be an issue here and you may want to keep eyes on it or address it to be preventative in, in a particular scenario. Depending on what's happening at the time of the inspection, it could relate to one of those type of uh, recommendations that you either need to improve, fix, uh, or even just build if it doesn't exist. <laughs> I've been at a home inspection, not with you, I don't think we knew each other at the time, and there was literally water pouring in, it was pouring rain outside, there was water pouring in through a huge crack in the foundation that on a sunny dry day, you know, maybe you wouldn't see it, but your visual inspection would have identified that crack at least in that particular scenario. And uh, client didn't end up buying that particular house, but we did find them something else. So again, qualified professionals, whether it's your home inspector like Kevin or a professional real estate agent, realtor like myself, we want to look out for our clients and we want to make sure that they're happy with what they get because you want to have a good experience with uh, where you're moving into. So let's dive into maybe some of the risks associated with not getting an inspection. Let's talk about the horror stories. Let's talk about some, some of the things that you've come across without mentioning any addresses or names or anything like that. What are some of the deal breakers that you've maybe seen that in your years of experience have been something significant that is a costly rehab that if they had not hired you, they would not have known about all the problems with the property. Can you share any ideas there? Well, that's a really important question. Um, Cause when we go into a home and visually inspect the condition of the home at the time, there can be severe problems uh, with certain systems if it's cracks and foundations that are leaking. But 
This, the idea is, is to get an understanding of how they can be repaired. We don't want to get in between uh, a, a potential buyer and their dream home. So they may have a specific location picked out um, where it's near schools for their family uh, or both. And if they pick a home that's there and there has to be some repair that's done, uh, we try to help them understand what those repairs uh, are going to be needed. Mm -hmm. So a crack in the foundation can be addressed by a, a drainage and foundation professional mm -hmm. and it can be fixed. Mm -hmm. And again, we talked about it earlier where your exterior of your building uh, with the water management system is the most important uh, to prevent or reduce the chances of moisture going into your basement. So that's kind of the idea that what we do is when we talk to clients, if they do see a crack and it does have moisture stains, so it's not raining that day, but it will have moisture stains around it, any crack in a foundation can see moisture in the basement. So okay. even if we don't see moisture stains, if it's a substantial crack, it should, should still be repaired. Um, but again, it's not something where you would necessarily want to walk away from the building. I think it's really up to the clients to determine what's important to them so if I do come across information uh, that is of concern, it's not my decision on what's important to them, but we tell them what's important with if it has to do with costs and uh, what type of repair. And then they take that information and have a conversation with a professional like yourself uh, to determine what they need to do with that information afterwards. Mm -hmm. So in that particular scenario, let's say for example, Kevin and I were out and we did an inspection and you know, nine out of 10 things were hunky-dory. There was just one item on the list of the things that we wanted to check out that looked like it needed to either be repaired or replaced. The options are a buyer can decide, hey, you know what, I'm okay with that. I can fix that up when I close on the property, no big deal. Or they could say, hey, you know what, I'd really rather have it fixed prior to completion, which we'll talk about more in a second. Or they can say, hey, you know what? We'd really like to get maybe a little bit of an adjustment to the price so that we can fix that when we do take possession, right? So any of those are options. What I typically recommend if there are some concerns is to maybe ask for an abatement to the purchase price. Ultimately, the reason would be a seller may choose the least expensive repair and it may not be to the best quality work that you may want to see in your new property. So let's say if it was a $500 repair, I would sooner say, you know what, just knock $500 off the purchase price and we're gonna go ahead and fix that after we take possession. As opposed to them saying, oh, you know what, we have Uncle Bob to take care of that. And Uncle Bob comes over for a case of beer, he fixes it and uh, let's, let's just say Uncle Bob is not a professional contractor. Uh, probably not the best option. All right, that was great. There's definitely a lot of value in taking time to have a home inspection done when you're looking at purchasing property. Kevin, are there any other types of inspections or any other insight that you want to provide to the viewers here today? So we do provide uh, many different types of inspections and really it's based on looking at something visually. So we'll do safety type inspections for older clients. We'll also provide uh, pre and post construction. So if a client redoes a bathroom, feels that they uh, need to have a professional eye uh, as myself to take a look at the bathroom, then we'll come in and take a look and make sure that uh, everything has been done properly in a sense of it's installed, it's working, it's functioning, um, it's, that's been done. So we do broaden our range out with different types of inspections. We're never really gonna limit ourselves uh, with the different types. So as long as you give me a call and um, talk with me, we'll, uh, we'll have a conversation and see what I can do to help you out. Okay, and if somebody does wanna get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? So the best way to get in touch with me, Kevin LaRouche with Homes Inspections, is to give me a call on my cell. Uh, it's direct, 519-777-8006. And uh, it just, it's free, so pick up the phone and give me a call and we can discuss what you're uh, deciding to do moving forward if it's buying a building selling a building or any type of other inspection that may be needed 
Very good. And I've known Kevin here for years. He's done multiple inspections for me. What I love about Kevin is that he actually takes the time to do the inspections the same way each and every time to make sure that no stone is left unturned. Um, a lot of great feedback over the years here from all the people that I've introduced you to with all those inspections. So Thank you. thanks very much for coming out today, Kevin, and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you, Justin. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Very so, good. Take care. Yes. All right. We'll catch you next time. I really hope you appreciated that information that we brought to you here tonight. Kevin brings a lot of great insight to getting home inspections done when purchasing property here. Professional realtors are also going to have a great list of contacts in order to introduce you to the people that you need, that they know, like, and trust, and have done business with before. Kevin is just one of many examples that I've used over the years I've been selling real estate. If there's something I could do for you to help answer any questions, please feel free to reach out. Again, if you haven't done it already, like, subscribe, click that notification bell. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.